This is a wild one. Let him cook. This is a wild one, bear with me. All right, take off your jaded hat and put on something a little more open-minded because I know that my audience is going to see this and think, oh brother, uh, this isn't for me. But I'm telling you, you should know why this strange, arguably poorly written Minecraft movie has gotten over 25 million views. Because it's not just because it's Minecraft, it's not just because it's from a popular creator. There are two very important lessons to learn from this video that defines the next generation of storytelling. All right, first let's set the groundwork. This video is called Minecraft, but I survive in parkour civilization. You know what Minecraft is, and if you don't, you should look it up. It's been like 13 years and you have no excuses. This video follows our essentially unnamed protagonist through the traversal of a parkour civilization. A story based in a world where everything is determined by your ability to jump from one block to another. Okay, hold on, don't click away, I promise, just bear with me. And I know it sounds very dumb, <laughs> strange, but there's something about dumb and strange ideas that make you want to understand what the author of the story sees in that idea. And regardless of what you think of it, it's novel. It's not something that's been done before. And that gets eyes on your project. Keep that in mind. That could be one of the takeaways in this video, but it's not. So let's get into one of the takeaways. This story is narrated in a very interesting way. I mean, it's a script that was written and read and filmed by the creator, but I'm gonna play you some of this video and I want you to really focus on the style of the narration. Down here, us parkour noobs only get fed once a day. One piece of raw chicken is just enough to get you to the next day. But that's the life of parkour civilization. If you want to survive, you have to parkour. Every parkour noob has the same goal, and that's to make it to the top layer where all the parkour pros live. Did you notice it? Let's try another bit of narration. Don't forget, you're at the bottom, so follow the rules. It's safe to say that if you're at the bottom level of parkour civilization, it's not exactly the best. But not everything in parkour civilization is that bad. For example, I was able to use parkour to buy the biggest house in the neighborhood. Did you notice that this script, this story that our main character is telling, has zero wasted lines? There is not a single line of this script that doesn't describe something important, ask a question, or move the plot. No wasted space. And I'll go ahead and tell you that this video doesn't have great character work. You don't connect with any characters. You might root for the main character, but you don't, you don't really connect with them. The world building is confusing. I mean, even the narrator attests to that. It's pretty nice. In parkour civilization, all you have to do to buy anything is just make more parkour jumps. I'm not really sure why or how parkour works as a currency, but all I know is I basically bought a two-story house for free. But here's the catch. The pacing in this story is so damn fast. You never have a chance to question things. I mean, listen to the narration of this video. Every line is cut straight back to back. No breaths, no pauses, nothing but content. And that is one interesting concept that we're going to get into. But I want to expand on this with one other significant method of storytelling done here. This was the parkour course that no parkour noob has ever beaten. If you miss any of these jumps, you'll either die from fall damage or fall directly into the void. But I've come too far and I've practiced too much to have that happen. I wasn't just going to be another parkour noob that fails this course, I was going to be the first one to rank up to become a parkour pro. My journey to becoming a parkour pro starts now. You see, there are two main reasons that stories feel addicting. And this video has both of them in spades. Originally, this series was released episodically. And when you have an audience that's tuning into a series like this, whether it's Game of Thrones on HBO, or Lost back in the early 2000s, or a Minecraft parkour civilization video on YouTube, you need to write your story in a way that makes someone want to tune in again. And this is done through pacing and wham moments. Wham episodes or wham moments or wham dialogue is the name given to these addictive storytelling moments 
that have existed in storytelling for hundreds of years. So many of our favorite addictive authors use these wham moments. Whether it's a line in a Stephen King novel that hints at something terrible that'll happen in the future, or the plot twist that so many Michael Crichton novels utilize. These wham moments are like an author's secret weapon. TV Tropes is a website I use pretty regularly in breaking down stories and exploring tropes, and their article on the wham episode is something that every storyteller should at least be aware of. I mean, these wham moments are shocking twists that keep readers or viewers coming back for more. The Goosebumps author, R.L. Stein, has achieved his success almost totally through the use of these wham moments. Every chapter ends with the main character thinking that they're about to die or that they've uncovered shocking information. And those moments ending each chapter makes the reader want to flip to the next page. This Minecraft video, each episode, ends with these wham moments. And the breakneck pacing, the incredibly streamlined narration, and the wham moments all combine into a storytelling experience where you are bombarded with progress. Look, maybe it's due to shorter attention spans. Maybe it's due to short form video content making us give up on a piece of content if it doesn't immediately grab us upon first impression. Are you still watching this video? Whatever the case is, this is the next generation of storytelling. And you're shaking your head because this is a Minecraft YouTube video. It's meant for a younger audience. It doesn't translate to books, does it? Amazon's Kindle Vela program has hundreds of thousands of readers reading episodic content with each episode being between 600 and 5,000 words. Wattpad boasts 90 million monthly users and over half a billion available stories, almost all of them written and released one part at a time. I mean, even Charles Dickens and Alexander Dumas and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle were writing their stories in a serial format. They had to convince readers to keep coming back, to look forward to the next release that may be weeks away. Maybe it does apply to books, right? Another interesting thing that I found in watching this Minecraft phenomenon was the sheer pacing of the video. Specifically, that the sheer pacing of the video seemed to make up for the lack of other qualities. By always moving forward, we don't have to worry about the details of world building. How and why is parkour used as currency in this society? Don't worry about it. That's just how it is, and we're moving on. Now, this isn't unheard of in modern fiction. In fact, this is a method of storytelling that has slowly been growing in the past decade, largely due to Brandon Sanderson and Robert Jordan adopting this motto of read and find out. Raffo which has turned into more authors presenting questions without providing answers and more readers trusting the author to give those answers at a later time when it's going to pay off more. This video's unapologetic approach to dragging the viewer into the world, shutting up all the questions and having them just experience things honestly sounds kind of freeing. And it made me realize that even in books, we should be leaning on pacing even more than we currently are. Who doesn't want to write a book that is addicting like that? Now, does that immediately translate to 26 million views? I don't think so. But if you watch the video, there's another key thing here that grabs audience attention. Let me ask you this. What genre of story is this video? Let's go, open up, it's time for parkour. All right, time for my mandatory parkour check. Let's get this over with. You're late, you know the deal. You can do the one block jump for the raw chicken, or you can attempt the one block vertical jump for the beat. Huh, oppressive class division? In parkour civilization, no one chooses to jump for the beef. It's better to be safe and do the one block jump for the chicken rather than risk your entire life for just half a hunger bar more. Tomorrow, you better not be late, or you'll be doing two block jumps as punishment. Yes, sir, sorry, I won't be late next huh. time. The powerful elite keeping the poor down? Oh no. Found a man. 
Somehow there was already someone living here. By their leather boots, I could tell it was a parkour noob. This was obviously some mistake. I went to go leave, but then- Wait! Don't leave! The man spoke to me. He said he's been watching me. I watched you enter the temple of parkour. I think you have what it takes to rank up. One person can defy the rules and change things? Oh my god. Is this a young adult dystopian story? Hunger Games? Divergent? Maze Runner? It is. Even though at first look it feels so different from that, it is at its core an iteration of a type of story that is already very popular. Wait, but wait, there, there's more? <laughs> this is so bad. But wait, there's more? Those were the exact words I wanted to hear. This is it. When I walk up these steps, I will be at the top level of parkour civilization. When I walked into the temple, I immediately saw massive statues. These statues looked like they were showing the parkour noobs and the parkour pros. They even had their boots on. This place is insane. I've never seen anything like this. I mean, look at these statue... What the? Gold boots? Wait, there's... There, there's even more powerful people than we thought? Who wears gold boots? This doesn't make any sense. What is this? Am I not at the top of parkour civilization? Oh my god, is that power creep? At the parkour pro level, everywhere you look is a two block jump. When I was a parkour noob, I thought two block jumps were extremely hard. But now that I could sprint, I realized they were almost like one block jumps. Something about the pro level felt different. Maybe it was the fact that when I was a noob, I would see dirt in the sky. But now there's nothing above me. And that's when I looked back at the parkour temple. There was still a world above me, and now it was way higher up. Oh my god. Is this progression fantasy? Lit RPG? The Cradle series, Dungeon Crawler Carl? It is. And if you don't know about this, this is a very recent and absolutely huge trend in genre fiction right now. Progression fantasy, lit RPG, they're slightly different but often kind of combined together, are genres that are built upon addictive storytelling. They are always raising the stakes. And every time that you feel like you understand what's happening and what's capable in this world, the author changes the rules and makes you feel completely out of your depth. This video, this random Minecraft parkour civilization video combines both of these genres into one with that breakneck pacing and wham moments every single episode. If this story had been another genre, something that was more grounded in character work, like a noir story, or something that was truly about the world around the characters, then this video might fall flat. It wouldn't have nearly the success that it does, and the audience would not have been nearly as, I guess, invested. But by focusing on this genre, it allows the story to focus not on the characters, not on the setting, but on plot. And plot is what makes that addictive storytelling. Look, I get it. This video may not be for you. You may look at this Minecraft video and think this is stupid. This is a bad story. This is a waste of time. And yet 26 million people have sat down and watched at least a portion of this two hour long video. You cannot sit there and say that there isn't something to it. You cannot ignore that the conscious decisions made by the creator of this video led to something that an audience tuned in for. You cannot say that this video wasn't effective in its mission. If you're jaded, then you might sit there with your arms crossed and disregard this parkour civilization. Look, it's easy to do that. It's easy to ignore popular things that aren't meant for you. It's easy to just wave your hand and say it's bad. But if you do that, then you really miss out on opportunities to learn, to grow, and to apply valuable lessons to your own writing. You can acknowledge that this is popular. You can attempt to learn why. You can apply that knowledge to your own storytelling in whatever ways make you happy. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to focus on creating addicting storytelling, those wham moments of shock that readers find so addicting. And I'm gonna make conscious choices that enhance the genre that I've chosen for my story. If you like breaking down storytelling like this, then subscribe for more. We have a great Discord with hundreds of writers and storytellers just like you. 
You can find a link below to come hang out, ask questions, share your writing, and more. I hope to see you there, and as always, thank you for watching.